Good morning and thank you so much for joining us. We're going to start our webinar in just a few moments. We're just going to give everyone a chance to log in. Well, good afternoon, everyone. We're so excited to see you all at our webinar on cultural intelligence and specifically about ILG's new training series. Next slide. My name is Erica Manuel. I am the CEO and Executive Director of the Institute for Local Government, and uh, I am so excited to be your host and moderator for today's webinar on cultural intelligence and specifically on the series that we are planning to host for local government leaders in California this year. Next slide. So a couple housekeeping notes for those of you that are on the Zoom, uh, Zoom line. Um, as you have already noted, you are a webinar participant and you should be on mute for the duration of the event. Your uh, cameras are also off. Uh, we do ask that you type any questions or comments you have for us about the series or anything that you really have into the Q&A box uh, during the session. That's how we will track your questions and make sure that we get to you an answer. And as you may have heard, uh, this session is being recorded. We will make that session available to those of you who were not able to listen uh, live and for those of you that wanna share it with your colleagues. So please do keep an eye out for a link to the recording of this session in a few days. Next slide. So I wanna start by just telling you a little bit about ILG and this leading local webinar. Um, and as many of you are connected to ILG through our newsletter or our social media handles, somehow you found out that we were hosting this session today. Um, we're grateful that you did, but we always know that there are a few of you that don't know about ILG. So we wanna make sure you understand who we are, uh, what we do and why it connects to the work that we're hoping to accomplish. Next slide. ILG is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that is really here to help local governments. Uh, we are the nonprofit training and education affiliate of three statewide associations, the League of California Cities, CSAC, and the California Special Districts Association. Those are three major associations in the state representing to collectively over 2,500 cities, counties, and special districts in the state. And ILG's mission is simple and it's unique though. It's to provide the practical and easy to use resources so that local agencies at cities, counties, and special districts, and specifically the leaders that work there and that represent there, those agencies can effectively implement policies on the ground. So much that happens at local government really impacts communities, and we are honored uh, to provide education and training specifically for local government leaders, whether they're staff, elected, or appointed officials. Next slide. Our programs and services really do range in a lot of ways from leadership and governance to civics education and workforce to public engagement and to sustainable and resilient communities. And these are some of the key areas that we found uh, really do challenge local governments as they're working to implement on the ground. Um, there's a lot of complexity in local government and ILG prides itself on being able to help local leaders navigate that complexity. We also know the capacity is never enough. We uh, never quite have enough resources, enough staff enough time to get things done at the local level and ILG loves to help with those kinds of things in particular because when you do have the opportunity to work on some of these key program areas you're able to build trust in your communities. We have a number of services related to the education and training, technical assistance and capacity building, and we even do convening as well and we are excited to work with so many jurisdictions up and down the state. Next slide. We do have a widespread network of local government leaders um, and we represent all the 58 counties, 482 cities and the 2,500 plus special districts. And really with those numbers, um, we are seeing more than 20,000 local agency leaders and connecting with them. And so it's really our honor and our privilege to have that network and to have uh, that cohort um, of really specialized uh, sector of our, of our public sector. And we really do wanna make sure that the work that we bring, the information that we bring the education and training that we bring is really connecting uh, you to your peers and you to the issues that matter most to you. Next slide. 
So ILG recently uh, fielded a survey of local government leaders, and in that survey, 64% recognize that they are struggling with understanding implicit bias, with talking about equity, and with navigating difficult conversations. And we see that as definitely an opportunity for us as an education and training affiliate to work really closely with our local government leaders uh, to figure out how to, how to handle that, because it's not getting any easier, it's actually getting more difficult. Um, next slide. We want to make sure that we are connecting the dots as it relates to the conversations we've started and that we want to continue to have around equity because we do see that it is a critical issue, but it's also an opportunity for us all. And so one of the things ILG committed to doing last year was to creating learning communities, to providing some technical assistance and to developing some resources and offering some trainings on this that are really tailored and targeted to that local government audience. And our vision really is to help you navigate this space. And, and it's not that we are the experts in it, but we wanna be able to curate the content that makes sure that you have the resources that you need. And sometimes that means that there's some cross-sector collaboration between state agencies, between philanthropic sector, between other public sector agencies. Um, it could be peer learning with people in the same general field as you. It could be collaboration between cities, counties, and special districts. We wanna make sure that you have greater access to the resources that you need and in a free and a low cost way so that your equity related training is available to you and when you need it. And we want to common ground some of those equity concepts that are a little bit uh, nuanced, right? And they're sensitive and we want to make sure that you have a safe space to talk about issues that are a little bit challenging and often um, you can't always find uh, the right place to say the wrong thing. And this is that safe space for you. Next slide. So today's webinar is actually not a formal webinar on cultural intelligence. What it is, is it's an information session about the trainings we're going to be hosting about this topic. Um, we're going to talk today uh, in just a probably 30 to 45 minutes give you an overview of what our webinar trainings will be uh, related to cultural intelligence. And uh, in the content that we just provided, we really wanted you to understand why we brought this forward. Um, the survey that we fielded and the responses we received really did speak to what so many local government leaders are grappling with, how they are struggling um, with these topics across so many different geographic regions and demographic reasons. And so we really do wanna make sure that you have some tools in your toolbox to help handle this. Cultural intelligence is one such thing, but it's not something that is utilized or said as often. Um, and so we do want to start by defining some terms. The next slide is something that I think um, might be helpful to, to start us off, right? What is cultural intelligence and why should you even consider this if you're thinking about operationalizing equity in your agency? Next slide. So cultural intelligence, or sometimes you'll see this called cultural quotient, is about having the capacity to relate to and really work effectively with different people, different kinds of people, and across different cultures. Um, and I think it's important to note that it's really about going beyond cultural awareness, it's about going beyond political correctness, and it's really deal, going deeper. Um, it speaks to the core competencies and, competencies and skill sets that are really important and critical for actual diversity and inclusion to exist in your agency and in your organization and in your community. Um, so much of the last few years, we've heard these terms like equity or diversity, equity and inclusion and belonging, and all of these terms are being thrown around. And there isn't necessarily a common ground um, definition uh, across jurisdictions and certainly at the local government level. And so this is just one piece of potentially your equity journey, but it's like I said, a tool for your toolbox. Um, I am not an expert in this, but ILG has certainly been looking across the landscape to find experts that can really hone this message for local government leaders. And so I am excited to be joined today um, by a friend and colleague, we'll call him, um, to help us along this path and to help us with this training. Um, next slide, please. So we're going to ask the expert to give us a little more depth on cultural intelligence. And I am so excited to be uh, joined today by Jacques Whitfield. He's a diversity, equity, inclusion, and HR subject matter expert with 
so much experience, decades worth of it on this topic and so many others. Um, and he's connected so closely to the public sector. He's connected to education. He's connected to nonprofits. He knows this inside and out, and he's going to be our guide on this journey um, as we work with you to identify sort of how this kind of could fit in with your agency to fit in with your jurisdiction and how it could work for you. Um, Jacques, welcome. Good afternoon and welcome to you, Eric. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me and good afternoon to all you wonderful folks who have joined us this afternoon. I do apologize about my voice. I, I work all across the country and now since the world is opening back up, I was just recently in Grand Rapids, Michigan and it was snowing there that I came back to beautiful sunny California and we have uh, well, one of the reasons that I moved to California, fresh air and sunshine and all the good things. And so that the, the change of climates is just slightly impacting me, but I'm, I'm feeling much better than I'm sounding. Well, it's, it's a really good sound, actually. It's got this gravelly voice, like I feel like awesome. you can probably sing the blues, maybe, awesome. I think. With Absolutely. This one. No, we won't hold that against you. We're grateful that you're here um, and that you can give us a little bit more insight about cultural intelligence and, and why you think it's important, why you how you've been implementing it across the country. We are lucky to have you as a California guy, but I do, do know that you work across uh, numerous states. Tell us a little bit more. Deepen that Absolutely. definition for me, if you don't mind. Yes. So first of all, I, I, I have been in the HR management space uh, for 24 years exclusively in the public and nonprofit sectors. Uh, and I've been doing diversity and inclusion work for that same period of time. I am so excited about cultural intelligence. This is the modality that gets to move the needle. And here's what I mean. So cultural intelligence is actually an extension of emotional intelligence. Uh, and for those of us who've been in the education space, who've been in social services, who've been in the health sciences, or even in law enforcement, we are aware with social and uh, with emotional intelligence and social emotional learning. So thought leaders in the organizational development space have for decades been focused on finding a modality, a way in which we build high performing teams, recognizing that high performing teams are made up of people from diverse and divergent backgrounds. And so uh, uh, back in October of 2004, the Harvard Business Review published its seminal article on cultural intelligence. And what it did, uh, cultural intelligence is essentially how different groups of people effectively communicate, collaborate, and connect with other groups of people, either that are similar or dissimilar. So that culture is, yes, sometimes it relates to ethnicity or national origin or race, but really culture in this instance is really looking at, uh, looking at uh, this through an anthropological lens. So we're talking about groupings of humans. How do one group of humans effectively connect, communicate, collaborate with another group of humans, either that is similar or dissimilar? Um, and so we've been, I, I am currently a principal consultant with CPSHR, uh, and we are a governmental agency, uh, uh, and we have the same, uh, we have the same footprint. In fact, it's really interesting, Erica, because I noticed that you have uh, a relationship with the California Special Districts Association. I wrote an article for them almost uh, two years ago on this same topic, and I'm actually going to be presenting at the annual conference for the uh, California Special Districts Association. So we're gonna be having more conversations on that platform as well. So I hope to see you there and I hope to see you. You will see folks. me there. I'm so awesome. excited. Yes, Looking yes, we it. love that. Uh, we have a large family at ILG. It's all the special districts, all the cities, all the counties. It's one big happy blended family and uh, we will be, ILG will definitely be at, at CSDA's uh, annual conference. I think we're in Palm Springs maybe, Palm Desert. I think we are either at Palm Springs or, or, or uh, Coronado. I think it's San Diego, somewhere oh, in Southern yes. California. We'll be about. We'll be about. We'll be about. Yes. We'll be about. Yes. But, but so the other thing I wanted to share about what this is not, and that's what we found has really moved the needle in the public sector space. Again, you're right. I do uh, work all across the country. I work in four primary jurisdictions: California, Colorado, Texas, and Florida. So a never a dull moment in my life. And so I work in the government space. I'm working with cities and counties, municipalities, special districts public universities, K-12, uh, school districts, uh, community colleges, so all in the government space. And what we really looked to create was a, 
a modality that brought folks together. Oftentimes, we know that conversations about diversity, equity, and inclusion can be difficult, as you pointed out, because they can become polarized. They can become politicized. They can, uh, we often don't have the language how to navigate this journey. We often don't know the ways of being. How do we hold space for all of these multiple and competing truths, all of these various lived experiences that we as humans get to acknowledge, right? So what we found in the frame in this framework, that this causes people, first of all, to feel safe because this is not about shame and blame. We do not do shame and blame here. This is not about, um, this is not a political conversation. So if you're team red, team blue, team purple, team green, our response is going to be the same. Thank you for participating in the American democratic process. Thank you for uh, fulfilling your civic responsibilities to keep our democracy healthy and strong. I think it's also, as you pointed out earlier in the, in the previous slide, this is not about mere political correctness. For those of us, and I'm a baby boomer, I'm 58 years young, so I certainly remember the era of political correctness. And it seemed as if HR, and I'm an HR subject matter expert, so I'm picking on us, but it seems like we were the hall monitors. We had a vocabulary, um, we had a vocabulary list. We wanted you to say these words and don't say those words. And we were all concerned with exterior. We were concerned with the transactional nature of employment, but we know and what emotional intelligence tells us that we are um, we are we are multidimensional beings, right? And we don't come to work as robots. We bring all of ourselves to work, and so this is a wonderful modality that connects with every facet of humanity that we represent and finds ways to connect from a perspective of. Um, from a, from a perspective of um, a, a positive perspective is recognizing and appreciating our differences and really teaching us a new way of being and a new vocabulary, which we're gonna talk about, that we can align without judgment for the purpose of moving our organizations forward. So we've that. been thrilled, we've been all up and down the state um, we've gotten rave reviews and we're seeing from our cities and counties, from our special districts, that the needles are starting to move. Folks are starting to have conversations. They're starting to be curious. They're starting to be empathic. They're starting to develop uh, compassion uh, within the framework of good government. And that's what we all want, because both our organizations are committed to the public service and the public sector. And Absolutely. certainly we want a modality that strengthens that commitment and that bond to all of our communities. I love it. That sounds perfect. And I do think also, you know, part of the reason why we were so excited about working with you all is that it is, I think, a useful conversation to have as, as just a, a member of a society, but it's a specific and unique conversation to have when you're wearing the hat of someone who works in a local agency or somebody who works as an elected official or an appointed official for a government entity. And because there's the expectations are different, the responsibility is different, um, and, and how you come, uh, how you show up. Is different and 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 Absolutely. every word can be you know misconstrued or elevated and it can become you know i can't i know we don't want to politicize any of this but there is a perception that if you say the wrong thing you are canceled forever and so right. i do appreciate as we talk a little bit more about this series i do appreciate that this is a time and a space for people in this lens and this in this kind of sector um to really be able to say some of the ask some of the questions they might have be able to, to work through some of the difficult conversations like you said build the language necessary absolutely and so it's important no, to remember, if i can just say this one thing that i would share with the audience this is all about employee engagement this is all about employee engagement this is about community engagement um, from an emotional intelligence perspective and lens uh, and I want to say this and stand by, this is not necessarily a social justice conversation. I'm not saying that social justice is bad, but in the space of good and effective government, engagement with our communities, responsibility, you know, coming from those pillars of responsibility, right? So coming from accountability, public accountability, 
coming from public responsibility, as you mentioned earlier, Erica, that's what this is all about. And what we find that as we are creating these safe spaces to really build that capacity for the public accountability and the public responsibility and to do it in a way that is free of judgment, because so often, and especially in the political environment, there's so much polarization, there's so much judgment. We judge ourselves, we judge people in our group, but we really judge the other folks, right? And so to have an opportunity to move that aside and to ascend to our next level of elevation is truly transformative. And that's what this work is. This is not a transactional training. This is a transformative process where the learning takes place both in the virtual classroom, but really outside of the classroom and not just training or learning or education for the sake of education, but for the purpose of operationalizing these concepts into every functional unit of our organizations. And that's what the work is. I love it. I love that. And that's exactly, I think, why we sync so nicely um, and why we really wanted to bring this to the group. Because uh, as, as Jacques mentioned, um, you know, I, ILG is committed not only to public engagement, it's one of our pillars and, and not public engagement in the context of here's your public meeting notice and that's the extent of it, but really deep and authentic engagement that really builds trust. And every Absolutely. one of our pillars and the work that we do in it is about helping you build trust. And so this series is one tool for the toolbox. It's a foundational portion of what you might do as you're exploring, as I mentioned, how to operationalize equity, how to talk about social justice. Even though this isn't a, a a series specifically for that, it could be useful in your discussions around that. Um, absolutely. And I, can I say this, Erica? You're yeah. absolutely right. It helps you hold space. It helps you hold space in a safe way and create that emotional safety so you can have those crucial conversations around allyship, around um, civic engagement, around social justice, but does it in a way that is not politicizing, but really recognizes the lived experience of every single person living within our communities. I love that. So let's talk more about the series and- um, Let's do it. Moving. So the next slides are gonna talk about what the series is and how we're going to roll it out. Um, okay. We have um, a couple different sessions and uh, the first thing you need to know is that there are four sessions. The next slide will tell you um, exactly when they are. Um, it's four, about two hour sessions starting with april we'll have one april 27th and we'll have one every month on the same wednesday every month through july uh, these are the topics our first session is really building on the conversation we started today which is the foundations of cultural intelligence that'll be our kickoff wednesday april 27th session two Wednesday, May 25th, and that'll be about developing the language of CI. So some of the words you can use, the vocabulary that you can use to really help you um, operationalize this and in your daily life. And then the third session is about managing conflict through the lens of CI, because we've also heard conflict is happening. It's not, not ever going to happen. Right. So we need to figure out how to manage it. And then the last one is mastering the art of those crucial conversations. And that's July 27th. A couple high level things before I turn it over to Jacques to walk you through what we might cover in each one of those sessions. First thing first, it is free to participate because ILG is all about providing you some resources. Um, and we know that some of you are lower capacity and you can't afford it. So we wanted to make sure that you have this foundational training free of charge, but you do have to register in advance because space is very, very limited. Unlike other ILG's other free webinars, this is going to be a little bit more interactive and there will be opportunities to connect, to try, try things out, practice, right? And to, and to connect with your peers, right? It's that peer learning that we talked about doing. Absolutely. So we're limiting space. And we do hope that when you register, you actually commit um, to be there and to be participant, uh, an active participant in that process, um, which is why we're doing this info session today so that you come prepared and know what to expect. Um, other things to note, we have not opened registration for these sessions yet, but we will open them probably no later than Monday. Um, so stay tuned for more information about that before the end of this session. Um, and Erica, I just wanted yeah. to presence that one of our attendees had a question about time, but I know you and I are still working on that, are we not? You are correct. The time is going to be likely the same, but I think you're going you're gonna to have them rolled out um, in order. I think we want to do the first one, see how that time works, and then pick the times for the others. But 
Uh, Jacques and I are gonna get our heads together and figure it out. I think we have a time book to um it'll it'll I think we chose the morning. So it'll be the morning. Yes, like ten to ten to twelve is the basic parameters. Well we think it's but we're flexible. We think it's the morning. We I would say you'll know for sure in a couple days, but we think we booked the morning. There you go. Yeah. Um I do think that unless we have a groundswell of consor um uh of of you know, protest, we will keep it in the mornings for all four. Um, unless somebody says, please do an afternoon. Um, certainly we might be flexible, but uh, our anticipation right now is this morning. Um, Jacques, all right. Talk to us. Yes, about let's do plan. a deeper dive. Deeper dive, just so you know what you're getting into. Next slide. Okay, please. next slide, please. So this is the foundations of cultural intelligence. Again, this is our foundational, our, our entry level uh, uh point of departure, which we began our DEI journey. And so we're gonna be doing um, a really, this is a grounding training to, to prepare our ways of being and to prepare our language, to prepare our mindset. So again, this is um, really about, as I was saying, as ever, Eric and I were sharing earlier, this is a really uh, about um, engagement, employee engagement, community engagement we're going to be discussing how to operationalize emotional intelligence within a DEI framework. And as I said earlier, cultural intelligence is looking at both big C and little c. Big C meaning protected status, national origin, um, ethnicity, but really more importantly, looking at this anthropologically and looking at it from the human perspective, how do different groups of humans effectively communicate, collaborate, coalesce, connect, recognizing that they are coming from different lived experiences, different backgrounds, um, different, different worldviews. We're going to talk about the origins of cultural intelligence and how cultural intelligence is really based in emotional intelligence. There are five pillars of emotional intelligence. Those five pillars are powerfully represented within the cultural intelligence framework. And we're going to learn what those five pillars are and how we get to access them as tools so that we can, as Eric was saying earlier, how we can cultivate, how we can develop these skill sets among our teams, among our leadership. Then in terms of mindset and ways of being, we are going to um, migrate from a, a, a mindset of agreement or a fixed or closed mindset. And we're gonna to transition to that mindset of acknowledgement which is a more growth or expansive mindset, recognizing that the world is not divided into two armed camps, as some folks would have us to believe. But if there are 7.5 billion people on the planet, then there are 7.5 billion potential worldviews. And we get to learn that there is no default answer key in the universe, that we really get to um, use those uh, tools of self-reflection, situational awareness, self-awareness and self-regulation in terms of assessing what is the best solution in any given cultural um, situation. And then our next level of elevation is really about, as we go from acknowledgement, it really is to go to alignment. And alignment purely and simply is agreement without the judgment. Can we, wouldn't it be awesome? My, my dream is that um, leaders migrate to that next level of elevation, where regardless of political party, regardless of perspective, that leaders get to come together and that they get to align in spite of their differences for the benefit of the common good, for the benefit of the entire community. And I think that is true. That is the art of governance in and of itself. And then we get to presence the fact that we're talking about um, transformational ways of being, not the 20th century and previous transactional relationships. So this is a higher way of being. And this course really sets us up for the next three courses. Uh, next slide. So in developing the language of cultural intelligence, and Erica, I think you set it up beautifully. These conversations around DEI are difficult because we're afraid we may say the wrong thing. I don't want to offend. Oh my goodness, should I, is it black or is it African-American? Is it, you know, is it ethnicity or is it minority? Is Latinx okay to say, or should I go Latino? Or what about Hispanic? We used to say Hispanic. What, what are the terms? 
So in this language module, we bring you, first of all, we presence uh, all about understanding the power of words, that words have the ability to heal, words have the ability to connect, words also have the ability to do divide. And from this emotional intelligence, cultural intelligence frameworks, we invite the participants into the next level of elevation to really embrace a vocabulary that is healing, to, to embrace a vocabulary that is connective in nature. And so we teach you the ABCs of DEI and the post-2020 definitions. What are the post-2020, post-pandemic, post-George Floyd, post-social justice awakening terms and definitions of diversity? Does diversity mean black and brown and people of color and um, women? And you know, is it an othering conversation? Or are we going to learn that diversity means the sum total of humanity? Diversity is more than protected status. It's more than EEO for my folks who are fellow HR um, professionals. So we're gonna learn those terms. We're gonna learn the difference between equity and equality and learn that both matter. We're gonna learn inclusion is action. We're gonna learn that bias is a mindset that we all have. And that when bias turns into conduct, that that's called micro behaviors. And so we're gonna do, um, so for the word nerds out here, you're going to have a amazing time. Uh, and again, we're gonna understand how words create safety, engagement, and connection among people and teams. And uh, finally, we're gonna learn that common language creates common understanding, and that prepares us for the next level of elevation. And the next slide. This is perhaps one of my favorite. Oh, who am I kidding? They're all my favorite, right? <laughs> so we stand conflict on its head. We flip the script as it relates to conflict. But again, coming from the public sector, especially from public education, and you, Eric, I've been in public education, both K-12 and the community college system together, what, 18 years? And we can be very risk averse. And when we see that there's conflict, risk, we have a tend to shut things down. We look at conflict differently now. Conflict now becomes a key performance indicator to growth, to transformation. Conflict now transmits what is our next level of elevation. And so we give you tools. We give you tools how to manage expectations. We give you tools how to manage conflict. We give you tools how to weave in conflict um, as uh, not only a key performance indicator, but as benchmarks of growth and transformation for your respective agencies. And we give you the tools and the resources for navigating this in a way that creates safety and going back to that E word, engagement. It's all about creating that engagement, which takes us to the next slide. Managing the Art of Crucial Conversations. And this, Erica, as you and I know, this is the culmination. We've got a way of being. We've got vocabulary. So we have language. We, have, we know how to manage conflict. And now it's time to apply it. Now it's time to pull it all together. Now it's time to understand the power of language and ways of being to create that transformative change. For any of you who've ever read the book, Crucial Conversations, or ever taken Crucial Conversations trainings, you know what an awesome modality this is. And for our, for our leaders, we're going to share with you a more effective and powerful way to bring all these resources together. We're going to presence how we communicate for understanding, how we communicate for connection, which is different than communicating for advocacy. And um, okay, spoiler alert, so come back for more. But, but again, we're gonna learn how to, how to part and parcel that. And when we really talk about engagement strategies, the first thing that's really important is communicating for understanding, where is my community? Where are my constituents on this issue? And before I you know, uh, tell them, let me hear. I, 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 uh, 
um, one of my favorite elementary school teachers, Sister Maria Garetti, uh, used to say, we have two ears and one mouth, so we listen twice as much as we speak. And it's true, and we're going to learn that in this framework. Um, and, and finally, we're going to provide you with uh, practical and timely guidance on how to engage employees and teams around the complex and passionate issues of dealing with transparency and accountability. And as you said, Erica, all of these sessions are going to be interactive. There'll be small group, there'll be breakout sessions, there'll be large group discussions. We built in a lot of opportunity because we love feedback and we know that we grow by feedback. The other thing I really want to say in terms of establishing emotional safety, we are giving every participant permission to fail. Let that land. The way to mastery is failure. The way to mastery is getting it wrong. We haven't had safe spaces, Erica, where we could have these conversations True. because there are my HR colleagues standing on the side waiting to send you to the principal's office if you say the wrong thing, right? So it's important. And again, recognizing EEO conversations are different from DEI conversations. DEI, we've got to build in that safety. We've got to build in that practice space so you can learn and get it wrong and get it wrong and get it wrong before you get it right. And um, again, the, the feedback that we're beginning from this course and all the courses has just been, it really warms my heart. And it's why I travel from coast to coast and lose yeah. my voice <laughs> because I'm so passionate about what I do. And what I love is that they can get it wrong with us, right? They can get Absolutely. it wrong with us and they can work through it. And then they're more comfortable in their jurisdictions, in their communities, ready to get out to the world. It's, Absolutely. It's, it's, the, it's the best way to try this. Absolutely. Um, I am excited. And I will tell you um, that we have a number of questions in the chat. So excited to see those. Thank you for sharing those questions. There's a couple that I'm going to answer live, but I did try to send uh, some of you some messages uh, written in writing. Um, and we just, we love what we're hearing. We're getting a lot of private messages too, that you're excited to, to be a part of this. And we wanna walk you through some details on how you can sign up and what that looks like. Um, with the disclaimer that we are trying something a little bit different here. Usually ILG says open to the world, thousand people come on in. Uh, but this is a little different for all the reasons Jacques just articulated. We want to make safe spaces and we want to identify that there are opportunities for people to connect, but we want to do it in the right space in the right way. So we're going to refine this over the course of the series and we're going to talk through um, how that's going to look. Um, Jacques, I said, can, I, one can I say one more thing? So let the participants, uh, because my first job ever was seventh grade math teacher. So education is a part of my DNA. So at the end of every training module, I give you a reading list because I want the learning and education to continue once we leave the virtual classroom space. And you'll get a, a cross section of books. They are not going to be only DEI. There are a lot of emotional intelligence books, cultural intelligence books, transformational leadership change books. I also, and Eric, I know you know this, for the last four years, I've been working heavily in the transformational leadership space. And I, I work with an organization out of Chicago, Illinois, Elevate Training Academy. And that's an emotional intelligence-based um, leadership transformation program. We have students and we have participants from all around the world. So I'm bringing, a, I'm, we've woven a lot of that into the curriculum as well, but we're not just, we're gonna send you off with tools. We're gonna send you off with a reading list. We'll send you off with a roadmap. And then we'll be here to support you um, through ILG along the way. I love it. I'm so excited about this. I am just, um, can you tell we're excited? We, yes, we're we so excited. We each other a little bit. Um, we've been, this is a long time coming. And I do say that, you know, we, I think since 2020 really, but all of 2021, you know, we held at ILG um, a, a listening session about how to operationalize equity. We did that in, in the last quarter of 2021. We heard from so many jurisdictions at all stages of their equity journey. So this has all been part of the strategy to get feedback before we develop the content, before we develop the cohorts, before we develop 
all of the things that you say that you need so that we're not duplicating resources, but we're really bringing in um, efforts that are already in place, maybe experts that have already been doing this like Jacques for decades that have that expertise that really can connect to what you're doing. So we love when we can partner with people that have so much insight for our audience and we can elevate together as a group. Um, so let's get to your questions. The next slide, I think, is just our Q&A slide, um, which speaks to uh, the chance for you all to, if you haven't written something into the chat, uh, to do that. Um, because it's a little wonky to change, uh, to, to unmute people, what we are going to do is ask you um, to drop anything into the chat. We'll answer those questions through the next couple of moments, um, and, then we will, and then we will close up. Um, so going to the Q&A, there were a couple questions I said I would answer live, in part because there's a little nuance here. So there's a lot of questions coming in about registration and how do you guarantee that you get in? Or if I'm not available for the first date, can I sign up for the next? Um, I've talked to Jacques about this and in theory, you don't have to be in every single one of the sessions. Um, there is certainly some lessons that are learned in, in, in one that you might need in the next, but he feels like you can still pick it up. Um, the other thing we'll note is that we are going to record parts of the session. Uh, the live experience will be different. The live experience will have breakout groups that'll have opportunities to connect with your peers, your colleagues, your others on the line and be really engaged and interactive. The recordings will just have the high level pieces that Jacques provides that the you know the kind of instructor guidance and training we will not record the breakout groups or the the group discussions. We do want to make sure that safe space is honored and protected and so we will not record that and share that. Um, that's super important. So if we do record a session, it will be available to others, but it won't really be that full, deep, dynamic experience you're going to get if you're one of the live cohort of 50. Um, did I uh, re represent that correctly, Jacques? Anything you want to add there? Yes, and uh, there, I, I'm seeing their questions as well, asking about the slides ahead of time and the reading list ahead of time. So again, I'm going to go back to my seventh grade math teacher. Um, you get the and there's a there's the method to the magic, not the mad not the, the madness, madness the magic. <laughs> and what I'd like to do because this is a, a emotional intelligence experiential learning, you get the information that day. So once this is all and 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 um, at least that's our that's how we've been doing this modality all across the country that has been most effective. Um, I will certainly work with Erica and and see what calibrations can be made, but because this is experiential, experiential learning, um, we will give you the materials that day, we'll give you the reading list that day. Now, having said that, Eric and I have talked about creating an equity library for ILG, and certainly we would love to be supportive um, in that endeavor, um, uh, but um, that's, uh, that's part of the process and that's part of the magic. Yeah, we're, we're uh, building this plane as we're flying it. Um, and we're grateful already for the grace you're gonna offer us to get that done. Um, but I will say just to, because I still have a couple questions in here, I, I think I've answered them all. We will be recording portions of every session, making that available to the general public. We will not record the private portions, the interactive portions, the breakout groups, that's gonna remain private. Um, but but Jacques, uh, Jacques' instruction will be recorded so you will get pieces of it. And the reading list and what comes after uh, will be shared uh, in the appropriate cycle with the with the session, likely at the end of every session that can also be shared. The slides, I believe, can also be shared as well. Um, uh, and those will be included after each recording um, or with each recording. And um, um, uh, so a, a couple more answers. The Crucial yeah. Conversations book. Yes, that's the book written by um, Carrie Patterson. Someone else asked a question and it was a really good one and I cannot locate it. Oh. I, I apologize, but it was a really good question and I'll, um, let me find it. I'm, I apologize. Um, I think we talked about reading list. Are there social groups slash networking oh. that you have that connect people in this training or people interested in the specific content to give them ideas or brainstorm? So I can answer one piece of it and then maybe Jacques can answer another. Okay. So one thing that we are committed to doing at 2022 with <coughs> is developing a cohort that is um, interested and willing and, and wants to connect about these topics. Um, we have, uh, for our public engagement pillar as an example, we have a group that comes together and talks about issues related to public engagement 
people that are practitioners in the space, they talk about tools, tips, resources, challenges they're facing in an open space. They ask each other questions, bounce ideas off of each other. We wanna build a cohort like that for equity. We also have one for sustainability called our Beacon Program. So we wanna build one of those for, for this, uh, for this this topic, uh, understanding that it crosses all kinds of, uh, of industries, topics, and other elements within government. So um, it's gonna probably cover a little bit of public engagement, probably a little bit of sustainability, probably a lot of leadership and governance. Is, and so the topics will merge some of ILG's other pillars, but look for that for us uh, this year and potentially um, may be able to coordinate something upon within the cycle of this training. So as soon as we get the registrations queued up, we'd love to curate a, a contact list and be able to build that network for you all that have signed up and are interested over the course of this year. Um, Jacques, I'll turn it back to you. I, for the I found the question. So it was Amy's question. The slides will be available after the, uh, after the recording sessions. Yes. Cool. And um, uh, will the sessions cover how to bring colleagues alongside who may be more reluctant? Absolutely. In every module, um, and we start, we, we, Amy, we do a heavy emphasis that in the beginning on the foundations of cultural intelligence and at the end with the crucial conversations uh, module, we spend a lot of time there. That's why we're talking about um, understanding the distinction between communicating for advocacy versus communicating for connection and understanding. Um, and we'll actually take you through some of those role-playing modules, what that gets to look like um, but yes, we will. And that, that's uh, part of the beauty of the magic of this training. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay, we've got a lot of questions in here. I'm gonna go through them very quickly. Um, you can get a copy of this PowerPoint. Um, we'll send it out when we send out the recording to the larger group, so no problem there. Um, is there a certificate at completion? You know, we didn't talk about that yet, but I'll answer that one uh, after I talked to Jacques. We hadn't built that in, but uh, certainly something we could- We've done them in other frameworks, so yeah. we've done them in other frameworks. Yeah, so. we've certainly could. Um, that's a great idea, a great suggestion. We'll we'll put our heads together, but we'll confirm, but sure, why not? Um, Registration is first come first serve. Yes, but we haven't on we haven't uh, opened registration yet, and we want to hear all the you know hiccups related to that first. We know that this could be a highly uh, contested and coveted uh, registration, so we haven't launched it because we want to understand how to do it the best way. So here's what I can tell you: we will be opening registration for the first session very soon. And when we do, we will um, only open that first session. We won't open the whole series so people don't sign up for everything and then not be available, right? So we really wanna make sure that people that commit um, are able to. And then the other thing that I would say is if you sign up and then you're not available because it's such so limited, we encourage you to remove yourself from that registration list if your schedule does change so that we can open it up to additional participants. Um, we will put there was the a question back about Sherm, There was a question about SHRM credit. We're looking into that. SHRM, IMPA, and um, uh, the other organizations. So we're working on that, and Erica will have more information available to you. Thank you, Jacques. Jacques handle in the chat, if you haven't noticed, and I'm handling the Q&A, so I so <laughs> appreciate this tag team effort. Um, we talked about the reading list um, being shared outside of the session. The whole thing can be shared outside of the session. It just won't be as interactive. It won't be as good. You'll have to do it in, in a sort of a self-guided way if you read the, watch the recording, but the recordings will be available broadly. Um, the dates there was will come back up for, in a second. Yeah, go ahead. There was a request to put the to uh, put the dates back up. Erica. Yes, there's another slide with the dates again. So just get get, get your pencils ready um, or your pens ready. I will put that up in just a minute. Um, because there are already 50 people in this session, is there a chance the amount of people would increase? Um, not at this time, you know, we'll leave a little bit of wiggle room because we know things happen at the last minute. Um, so we'll we'll probably allow a little bit more than 50 to register. Uh, but we do think that because of the interactive nature of it and because, you know, Jacques's only one person, we want to make sure we've got um, enough uh, space for everyone to communicate over that two hours. Um, but if we do figure out how to do more of this or create a more opportunity, uh, we absolutely will. Um, and certainly um, if we can if we can double up or triple up on this um, in the demand. And there's always a possibility. I mean, we could talk about, we could run um, another cohort. Another cohort, yeah, yeah. We'll see the what demand is like. That we're gonna be, yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Stay tuned, stay tuned. Um, and that is, uh, 
Well, we see another training series like this. In addition to this series on cultural intelligence, there will be another series coming as part of Leading Local on Bridging Divides. Um, and so there's a slightly different um, different topic, but it's very related. They're going to be coordinated. Um, so it won't be exactly this, but I know for a fact that we'll have a Bridging Divide series. It's going to have three or four parts too. Um, but if, like I said, if demand, if demand warrants it, maybe Jacques and I could have a conversation about well, if we do another cohort. Uh, I think I've answered the crucial conversations question. I think Jacques already answered. Um, do we have a preference for the role or the position within an organization? Um, so would you, and, and I do think in, in terms of fairness, one person per organization would be the most fair thing to do, um, certainly. But is it a more appropriate for a DEI manager at the staff level, an elected official, you know? Um, you know, I think that's that's one of the things, Jacques. I I could I certainly have some ideas, but but what do you suggest? So again, I do this all across the country. Um, I know seating is limited, but more is better. Um, I think it is important to have elected officials and appointed leadership all on the same page. Some of the most difficult conversations I'm navigating, and what we're and Erica, you're aware of this that we're we're, we're working with electeds, we're working with appointed leadership um, to, to bring, because we want all of the leadership elected and appointed to have a united position on, uh, on the position as it relates to uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. So, uh, and one thing I will say, while, uh, and, and you know, I'm an HR guy for 25 years, but this conversation needs to come out of HR and it needs to live in the C-suite. So city managers, county execs, this needs to be at the executive level. Yes, HR is a champion, but so is fiscal services. So is administrative services. So is the city clerk's office. So is director of public works. So is director of parks and grounds. So is you know every functional area of a city or county governor's or, or special district. So, um, and so, yeah, I know I've probably like budged on that because I think they all should be, I can't say who's more important. I can't because I think it needs to live at both levels. Agreed, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> All right, there's a couple more questions in here. I wanna make sure I've caught most of them. The date slide is coming back up in a sec, as I mentioned. Um, I think we've answered the question about who can attend, who should attend. In theory, it's a it's it's appropriate for anyone. Um, but I would say if you have to pick one person, make sure it's a person who can uh, elevate the conversation within the organization. Absolutely. That's able to have really, really meaningful conversations. And as Jacques mentioned, maybe outside of HR, and because it's it's sort of living there now, if it's living there now. But again, the biggest champion in your organization, if they're available, should should try and join this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, fantastic. Um, can one person register and watch with a group? Um, in theory, I think the answer is yes. There's no restriction, right, around people looking around one Zoom screen. Jacques, what are your thoughts on how they would manage a focus group or a breakout group with a group of five on one? On one I group? honestly think that's going to be clumsy. I would rather look at setting another cohort series yeah. because you lose something in that. And again, going back to, you know, education is a part of my DNA. I don't want to deprive anyone of the fullness of the experience. Yeah. And I think if you're looking around, you're not getting, you're not getting that connection. You're not getting that engagement. And again, this is premised on engagement, right? And so maximum engagement is exactly that, maximum engagement. And so if it's something where Erica and I need to create another um, thing, we can, we can talk about yeah. that. But I think it's really important that, um, uh, that everyone who is participating is participating fully. Yeah, um, I, am, I have a question about how many people are in today's session. Uh, so, well, we here's what we know: we have over to over two hundred were registered for the session, um, and so they are. And many people said, "I can't participate live. I want to listen to the recording," which is why we are recording this. Uh, so. I can't say how many people uh, would be interested in it, but I do think that we'll have more than the fifty to be sure. Um, how do we get added to the mailing list? You're reading my mind. That slide is coming up. 
Um, and then if we'd like to host a session for staff and electeds with one registration, how does that affect the breakout session? I think that Jacques just answered that. It's very complicated to kind of do that. It's like a really bad hybrid meeting where nobody can hear. You're right, exactly, exactly. Um, so it's, it's it, we haven't mastered the hybrid functionality yet, but let's talk offline about how you might be able to get a session for your, for your jurisdiction. And, and maybe you go through one and you say, this would be phenomenal for my jurisdiction. How do we get one? There's certainly opportunities for customized ones, I think. Too. Absolutely. Um, so that's, Absolutely. that's an option. And, and, and Erica, you know, we're doing that. So yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, I think we answered that one live. Um, I'm going to answer this live about getting to the mailing list. Let's go ahead and put the next slide up, Nikita, if you wouldn't mind. These are the dates. What is going to open first on registration will be this Foundations of Cultural Intelligence. That's on April 27th. And again, that time will be set. You should be hearing about um, the details, exactly the details in terms of the time. Um, this week, likely Friday or Monday, the registration will open. Um, and again, with space is limited to 50 people per session, give or take. And so we're, we're really focusing um, on local government staff, elected and appointed officials. Um, we will ask you to validate your, uh, your, your organization, your title, uh, to make sure that you're a local government representative, because um, we do want to make sure that we leave as much space as possible for those that are actively in, uh, in those cities, counties, and special districts. Um, Making sure I'm checking the chat. I don't see any more questions there. Um, let's go to the next slide, which talks a little bit about how you stay connected with us. So I have seen that some of you got this email forwarded to you and this webinar forwarded to you to, to pay attention, to listen in from either a city manager, a general manager, a CAO or elected. Um, we love that. But if you really want to stay up on this uh, series and everything that ILG sends out, we encourage you to stay connected. We have a Facebook account, we have a Twitter account, we have LinkedIn accounts, and our website is where you can sign up for our newsletter, which is going to be the ultimate source for registrations for this uh, series and all of our webinars, which we do dozens a year. Um, so we do hope that you will sign up and I'll put in the chat, if you guys can see it, um, our website, and you can go on and take a look. Um, I will type it in now. Oops. And that's our website. Go ahead and, and click on that and you scroll down to the bottom and you can sign up for our newsletter um, and we will make sure that you get included on any of the communication that goes out about this series and everything else. Um, we try not to spam too much. We only tell you about what's really important. Um, we do have a monthly newsletter and then anything our, any of our webinars and trainings are what we post about um, with our newsletter database. Um, see what else we have any other questions in the q a before we wrap this up oh wait i think there's one in the chat oh wait that might just me or it might have come oh no that, that no that was just me um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my part eric you're doing, doing your part. part you're doing so great <laughs> as my co-panelists here i love thank you for for moderating that chat for me absolutely um, I think we might have answered all questions and I think we uh, might have covered almost all the topics. Um, I do want to just say thank you so much to um, a couple people. Number one, Jacques, you've just been such an inspiration. I can't wait to work on this so, uh, series with you. I. Um, uh, it's been a long time coming and I just, I, I can't wait to see uh, what kind of response we get and what kind of difference we make together. Um, I'm very excited. I also want to thank the team behind the scenes that you can't see behind these Zoom screens that are moving PowerPoint slides around and making sure that everything works as it's supposed to. Uh, so thank you, Team ILG. Um, and thanks to all of you for spending your lunch hour with us. And um, hopefully we answered your questions. Feel free to reach out with any additional ones and keep an eye out for the uh, notification about the recording of this session in case you want to share it with uh, anyone else at your agency and also details about how to register for our first session which is going to be on april 27th next slide please like i said recording available soon <laughs> next slide thank you so much for joining us um, it has been a great hour to spend with you and uh, hopefully you'll get a chance to go grab some lunch before your next meeting Thanks thank all. you everyone <laughs>